Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Greece hits rock bottom in corruption index EU commission Zunocrats on a new ECB charge card spending spree Boris Johnson says ce n'est pas moi to la banque de Francaise and I take a quick look at the European Journal section of our website I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit nightly news Leading on our homepage, Greece has scored the top rank for being perceived as the most corrupt nation in the EU. This article covers the ground on this story, but I would like to add that this is hardly surprising given the high-performance drivel ceaselessly vomited by the mainstream press about corruption in Greece. Look, let's face it, the total tax revenue for Greece is 52 billion euros a year. Bailout loans to date are 240 billion euros and gross debt for Greece is currently around 300 billion euros. Are you really telling me that a country with a total annual tax take equal to only 15% of its debt can lay the blame for its economic disaster at the feet of its people? Sorry, Euro Einstein bean counters, but once again, your numbers just don't add up. The Commission is breaking out the charge card again, I see. This time, it has allocated 199 million euros to combat animal diseases and zoo noses. The report sets out a short list of animal diseases and specifies a set amount of the fund to be deployed in combating them. Now, the report highlights the success in managing rabies, which it attributes to the Union's eradication programmes. Interestingly, though, Croatia is already earmarked for a slice of the credit card action, even though it's not yet an EU member state. Links to the full story are below. Well, Boris Johnson has come out of his corner swinging, pouring scorn over a proposal by Monsieur Neuer, the governor of the Bank of France. Now, Vince Cable was in on the act, but only with some whimpering about clever French understanding Britain's valuable contribution whilst hiding behind his satchel. But no, it was Boris who is taking it to the bully boys from Bordeaux. This is a good, robust story and well worth a read, and I've put the links below. Now, finally, I want to draw your attention to the European Journal section of the unit website. This is a daily journal packed with stories relating to Europe and the EU. Now, it's broken down into categories for politics, business, society, environment, education and other stories. The European Journal is compiled daily from multiple sources across the internet. And for those of you who follow us on Twitter, its publication is announced daily, a little before noon. And there's a clickable link that will take you straight there. Now, hitting briefly on a couple of stories, just to give you an idea... We picked up on a story in the Washington Post about rising tension between Israel and the EU. Now, apparently, the UK, France, Sweden, Spain and Denmark have all summoned, summoned Israel's ambassadors, presumably to express their dis dissatisfaction with the current situation. And also, the New York Times writes, British business leaders stay silent on EU exit. Now... This article highlights the growing Euroscepticism in the UK, but goes on to mention that there seems to be little being said about it by key business leaders. Now, links to both stories and the European Journal page of our website are below. And today in our video library, Stacey Dooley continues her investigation into the Irish economy in Ireland, the Lost and Leaving and links to that video are below. Well, that's all from me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, www.theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the EUnit. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. Finally, of course, you can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus anytime. 
Rick Timmis for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.